So, hoo, hoo, hoo. okay, 13. All right, so tree diagrams now. So it says in group C, there are six girls and eight boys. And in group D, there are three girls and seven boys. Now a team is made by picking at random one child from group C. So you got one out of these guys. So just to help, let's just make a total number of both here. If you've got six girls and eight boys, then you've got 14 uh, students in that class, yeah? So 14 students. Whereas in group D, you've got three and seven, so 10 students. Okay, so it's always good to kind of like total these up here yeah? because we're using probabilities here. Now, next part is, it says a team is made by picking at random one child from group C and one child from group D. All right, cool. Completed probability tree diagram. Okay, so we can we look over here. We say the property picking a girl and a boy from group C. Well, we know that we've got six girls out of 14. So you just write six out of 14. And we know we've got eight boys here. So eight out of 14. Cool. And then on the next group, we have group D. Girl, uh, girl wise, we have three out of 10. Boys, seven out of 10. And this is just the same tree. So three out of 10, seven out of 10. Now, work out the probability that there are two boys in a team. Okay, so for two boys in a team, you just follow the boy tree. So in other words, you just go through here. So the result would literally just be 8 over 14. And when you chain things up, you multiply, yeah? 8 over 14 times 7 over 10. And conveniently, you can put this in your calculator. So 8 over 14 times 7 over 10. I got 2 fifths. That's my answer. Don't know why that's doing there. <laughs> So, yeah, just leave it as a fraction, guys. Don't write decimal. This is, you don't have to. They're not picky like that. Yeah. Now, for the next part, it says, after the first team has been picked, a second team is picked. Okay, so I'm trying to understand it myself. One child is picked at random from the children left in group C. Okay, so I think we're trying to say, when you pick a team, okay, so what, that's from my understanding. So you pick a child. You, had, you initially had 14 students and 10 students. That's team one. So when you pick a student, you now end up with 13 students here and 9 students left. And that goes to team 2. So, one of, so of course, one from, one from that group. Now, it says here that one child is picked at random from the children left in group C. And one child is picked at random from the children left in group D. Now, work at the probability that there are two boys in each of the two teams. Man, where's the girls at? Why are they not picking girls? So, let's have a look. We already said initially that when they pick two boys, we got two fifths, right? So we can call it, we can say all right for the first set probability of picking let's say uh, first team of boy and boy we got what's that so this is the first set yeah with this property was two fifths now if we think about because you did that already you're now down to seven boys out of thirteen so that's the second set so this is the second set now probability of picking boy and boy you're now down to seven out of thirteen for the first group and we had seven previously, we now got six out of nine for the second group, times six out of nine. Okay. And here, if you type this in the calculator, you should get 14 out of 39. Okay, so we're almost done now. So we just found the properties of this happening. And we can say, therefore, to work at the property that there are two boys in each of two teams. So now finally, we just put them together. If you multiply both of these together, because that's what they want, you'll get a final answer of uh, 28 out of 195 and yeah and that's your answer and for people working in decimals you should have got 0 0.14 I'm gonna, say, I'm gonna say three decimal places 144 something like that yeah and that should be it now 14 so it says that we got this symbol which is actually called the universal set by the way this means all the numbers we're allowed to use in this question so it says that we can only have positive integers less than 20 so if I had to just put this out Positive integers means whole numbers, which are positive, like 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 18, 19, but not 20, yeah? So these are the 19 numbers we're going to use. Second one, we have set A, which is part of the universal set. It's all x values less than 12. So just, we can say A is basically 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 12, so up to 11, yeah? You don't have to put all numbers, but it's good if you kind of break it up a bit. And for set B, it's between 7 and 16, but includes 7. So it's going to say, it's going to be 7, 8, 9, dot, 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 all the way up to 15. 
Remember, it doesn't include 16. Now, part A. It says that we need to list the members of A intersecting B. So this symbol here means numbers they have in common. Well, if you look at the numbers, this goes from 1 to 11. That goes from 7 to 15. The only numbers it has in common is between 7 all the way up to 11. So the answer here would be 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You don't actually have to use a symbol. This is just uh, something we like to you know, collect, collect our numbers in. You don't actually have to write in your exam. Now for the next part, we have a new set C, which is a set such that A is a subset. Is that again? Oh man, I don't forget. C is a subset of A, meaning C is actually inside of A. And the number of terms of C is 3. So for example, like we have 19 terms here. This means there's only 3 terms of C. So C is basically consists of 1, to three numbers. Now, given that all members of C are even numbers, so so far C is a set of A, so it could possibly be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So let's write it down. So it could be 2, 4, 6, 8, or 10. There's only be three of them. List the members of one possible set of C. Okay, cool. It's actually not bad. You just pick any three random even numbers. So let's just say 2, 4, 6. Yeah, and that's it. Nothing to it. Now, 15. Use algebra to show that the reoccurring decimal gives you 14 out of 55. Okay, reoccurring decimal. So when they say to show this, you have to use algebra. Like that's the only way to do it. And to do it, we kind of have to basically call this uh, thing x, yeah? It's reoccurring decimal. So we could say, all right, let x equal that number. So 2.0.254, and then the thing is 5 and 4 are recurring. So it'd be 5, 4, Five, four, and then dot, dot, dot. And the trick is, guys, with these questions, that you just have to keep multiplying in, in tens until you have some numbers that kind of look the same after this decimal. So let's do this. So let's multiply by 10x here. If you do by 10x, you're going to get 2.5 and then 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, dot, dot, dot. So far, the numbers don't line up. So if I multiply this again by another 10x or so 100x, we're going to have 25.5. Uh, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, dot, dot, dot. So let's see, let's see. Do any numbers line up? Yes, they do actually. We can see that. Hold on, let me change the color pen. We can see that the numbers in X, so this set line up after one decimal place. Now, so so to explain this properly, what we're trying to do, we're just trying to get the same set of decimals because we're going to try and subtract two equations. We're going to combine two. So for example, we're going to use the equation which is X. An equation which is 100x and we're going to say if we subtract these two equations so equation 1 from 2 so 100x take away x you'll be left with 99x and if you subtract these decimals you'll realize that um, all of these cancel out so all these decimals cancel cancel out with this one and you're left with 25.4 take away 0 0.2 which is actually 25.2 okay so that's what you're left with and then to find x well just divide 99 across for x over 25.2 over 99 and thankfully if you put this in your calculator you're getting you're gonna get 14 over 55 and that's it that's literally all they want you to do is just subtract two set of equations with the same like lined up decimal and you got the result now 16 so here are the first five terms of an arithmetic sequence. So, so far they're all going up in threes, yeah? So plus threes. Find the sum of the first hundred terms. Okay, okay, so this is different. Now, the sum of the first hundred terms uses a certain formula, yeah? So this is the formula. We have Sn equals the number of terms over 2 times uh, 2a plus n minus 1d, okay? So I'm going to explain what everything is. Here we've got A, yeah? A is actually the first term. So in this case, the first term is actually 7. D is your difference, which is what is going up in. It's going up in 3. And N is your position. So what we're trying to say here, we want to find the, first, the sum of the first 100 terms. So in this case, N would actually have to be 100, because we're trying to work out 100 terms. Now, just put in a calculator. So we can say that S100 is going to be 100 over 2, which is 50. And then 2 times two times a, which is uh, 14. Now, n minus 1, so 100 take away 1 is 99. And then we're going to have 99, let's just write down, 99 times 3. 
If you do that, you're just going to get a result of 15,550. And that's it, guys. Yeah, so far, not bad, is it? All right, guys, number 17. So we've got A and B are two similar vases. Vases or vases? Well, what do you guys say in your country? Because I actually can't remember how to say it. Vases or vases? Well, you let me know. Now, according to the info, the first vase has a height of 24. So let's just um, say 24. Draw the height of 24. Whereas the second has a height of 36. So this has a height of 36. Now, guys, before we look at the next piece of information, um, one thing to note. Because we're dealing with similar shapes, all that is telling us is that one shape is just proportionally bigger than the other. So I think the first thing we need to do is probably work out the scale factor. So I'm going to call the scale factor K, yeah? And I'm going to say that to work it out, you just divide the numbers. So the scale factor between B to A is 36 over 24. If you divide them, you just get 1.5. So it's telling us that shape B has a height which is 1.5 times bigger than A. Okay? Now... The next part, it says vast A has a surface area of 960 centimeters squared. Work out the surface area of vast B. Okay, so see how we just divided the lengths? If we're dealing with areas, then we need to use a scale factor squared. And, then, and likewise, if we do volume, it has to be the scale factor cubed. So for the scale factor squared, um, we start with shape B because that's what we did. So we can say that the surface area of shape B, let's just call surface area um, S here for shape B. And the surface area of shape A was 960, so surface area B over surface area of A. And it's supposed to equal a scale factor of 1.5 squared. Okay, that's exactly what it is. So this means that to work out surface area B, you just multiply 960 across. So SB equals 1.5 squared times 960. Okay, and if you put that in your calculator, guys, you should get a result of 2,160 centimeters squared okay and that seems legit because b is bigger than a so you expect a larger area now for part b it says vast b has a volume of v centimeter cubed find in terms of v an expression for the volume in centimeter cubed of vast a so we're going to literally mimic the idea here yeah? because we're dealing with volumes instead of k squared we're going to use k cubed equals the bigger shapes to the volume of b so the volume of b we say when well, he calls it v and we want to find terms, the shape of volume A, of vast A. So we're going to just call this shape, I don't know, uh, VA, yeah? Just for the sake of it. Now, what they want us to do, oh yeah, and this is supposed to equal the scale factor cubed, so 1.5 cubed. Now, they just want us to more or less make the vast A the subject. So if I make vast A subject, I'll need to multiply this across. So it's going to be something like, what? Wait, find in terms of V, an expression for the volume in centimeter cubes for vast A. Yeah, so we need to make vast A subject. To do it, you just times VA across and divide 1.3 cubed across. So it'll be something like VA equals uh, V over 1.3 cubed. Now, 1.3 cubed is actually, I think you could leave your answer like that. It's 27 over 8. So it'll be V over 27 over 8. And if you tie this up, because you've got a fraction on the bottom half, if you divide a fraction, it flips upside down and you multiply. So it's going to become 8 over 27 times V. And that's it, guys. That's your result for VAS A. Yeah. All right, so question 18, guys, yeah? So the diagram shows triangle PQR, all right, right here. So you've got two lengths and an angle. And they want us to calculate the length of PR. Okay, so straight to the point. Now, because you've got an unknown length, let's just give it a name. Let's call it X, yeah? And... The way to solve any single triangle problem in any single paper is to either use the sine rule or cosine rule. Okay, that's only for non right angle triangles. Yeah, so we're going to forget trigon Sokotoa, trigonometry, Pythagoras. Then they, we don't talk about them here. Now, which one do we use? Well, we always try the sine rule first. And the sine rule tells us that we need a matching pair of length to its opposite angle. So, length to angle. In this case, we've only got x and its opposite pairs, 36 degrees. However, we don't have another pair of angle. Because if you had two angles at least, and two lengths, then we can do it. But we can't. So in this case, we cannot use the sine rule. In this case, however, we can use the cosine rule. Because the cosine rule tells us that we need three lengths and an angle. And we got it. We've got an angle and three lengths. Now, according to the cosine rule formula, if we have an angle, we have to call it A. Yeah? So this angle is actually called A now. This means that it's opposite 
length to the angle has to be little a. So x is now little a. This means that the other two can be b or c. And it doesn't matter which, which order you call it. So according to the formula, guys, the cosine formula, it's actually like this. It's written as a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay, And you can see that clearly capital A is the angle here. Now, because we have everything we need, we just substitute in, guys. So replacing little a with x, so we have x squared. b is 17.8, so 17.8 squared plus c squared minus 2 times. So I'm going to wrap these in brackets here. So b is going to be 17.8, c is going to be 26.3, and we've got cos of the angle 36 degrees. And yeah, guys, now all you do is essentially just put this in your calculator approximately let's say 251 yeah and now be careful guys because you want to find the length of pr so you don't want to find x squared you want to find x so that means you've got a square root answer yeah so if you square root your result so just write in your calculator square root answer you should get approximately 15.8 centimeters and that's it guys has to be three significant figures yeah